Hi, and welcome back to Willie Farms. I'm Donna Cavender, and I have your personal invitation to stop by and say hello. We're here on Route 13, very easy to find, even if you're traveling on Route 1. Get off in Odessa and travel south on Route 13, or if you're coming from the south, get off just north of Smyrna, come north on Route 13, you can't miss us, we're right here. Of course, you can follow us on social media. We are everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, we have a YouTube channel, uh, Instagram, and of course, we have a website, which is willyfarms.com. As you can see here, we are in transition here at the market, going into the fall decorations and cooler temperatures, and that's pretty much what we're gonna talk about today on our show. Fall temperatures, cool days, cool nights, kind of makes you think of maybe football and tailgating and also what you need to do in your garden as you're getting ready for winter and going into the fall. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get started. So we've made our way to the greenhouse and I have with me Kathy Smith, our greenhouse expert. Thanks for helping out today, Kathy. No problem. Okay. Glad to be here. We're talking about fall mm -hmm. and what to do, what not to do, what you can plant, what you can't plant. And we're going to start off with house plants. House plants. Right? Yep. And you, you said this is a house plant. This is a house plant. It's actually a, considered a tropical. Uh, it's a shrimp plant. It's very interesting. Yeah. And, and they call it that, I guess, because it looks like it scales. Looks like, well, yeah, it looks like shrimp. Um, not edible at all, <laughs> okay. but it's not actually a tree. It's actually kind of vining in a bush, but oh, they, have, they have it trained on to a bamboo shoot, which makes it, you know, a nice conversation piece, you know, for your household to sure. bring in. Um, so just talking about some of the tropicals that you want to bring in before the danger of frost. Okay. Sometimes we wait too long and that one night just kills it. Right. So when you bring in your house plants, you don't need to repot them until the spring, but you do want to check for insects. Oh, You want to sure. check to make sure that you don't bring any insects into the home. Okay. So something like this, um, you want to make sure you check under the leaves, in the soil, you don't have any ants around the bottom of the pot okay. or anything right. like that. Right. If you do, you want to make sure you, you know, spray it with some type of insecticidal soap um, just so that you don't contaminate everything in the house. And now, do you change the way you water it when you, when you move it from outside to inside? Yeah, because you're going to be getting less sun. Make sure you get the proper light, but you do want to okay. give it less water than what you've been giving it all summer. Kind of like you're going to drink less cold beverages and things right. in the winter time. And, and some, this, this is a philodendron? Close. <gasps> it has the same leaf. It's okay. a pothos. Oh, okay. This is a golden pothos, so Darn. it has that yellow variegation that in it. Wrong. Something like this, I might give it a nice little trim. Oh, okay. Because it's kind of growing over the pot. Right. But other than that, that's about all your house plants are going to need. Just make sure okay. that you, you check them for the insects, uh -huh. ants, things like that that they pick up outside. This one is very healthy. Yep. Yeah. So once you've got the deck cleaned off, you've got all those plants brought into the house and your sunroom or, or you know, right. wherever. Um, usually go with um, cleaning out the vegetable garden. Oh, okay. Your tomatoes, your peppers, you should have that. By the time this commercial airs, you should probably have all that out unless okay. you're still getting a little bit of tomatoes, tomatoes. and things. Tomatoes. Okay. Take all that out, clean that out, and you should have your fall cabbages and things planted. Now, when you're getting rid of your summer plants, mm -hmm. is it best to take them out and put them someplace else, or can you just till them into the ground? Um, you want to take the, those out, because you don't want diseases okay. and things like that okay. to carry gotcha. on. All so right. you want to clean out that vegetable garden. Okay. Um, you don't really need to trim any of your trees, but you want to cut any broken branches, okay. any dead branches, sure. anything like that, maybe a little shaping. Okay. And then go on to maybe raking your yard, getting all those leaves up. Right. Because um, your yard can't breathe. Right, right. Your grass, leaves. you don't want to smother. And yeah, these are one of my favorite things to use in the yard. They're great. Someone gave them to me a long time ago, and they're, they're like leaf claws. They're great. You you can use them as a rake because uh -huh. you get down and, and rake oh, it all okay. together. Yeah. And then it's amazing how many leaves and, and brush and things you can get in between these two. Not just this little bit here, but right. big bits of yard waste and leaves and everything. And I, I just love them. And you just pick them up and go and drop them wherever you need to drop them. And uh, they're very, very handy. I like them. I yeah, like and I them like a the lot. idea that you can get in between the plants with them and just kind of right. Sure. Yeah. 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 As so. a rake, you can just take one and get in there and right. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Those, that's those a great are idea. very, yeah. very handy. I love the uh, the leaf grabs. So after we get the yard raked up, um, let's go on to our perennials. You don't really need to cut them back. Some perennials, like your daylilies, liriope, things like that, hostas 
can sometimes get a little overgrown, you need to thin them out a little bit. Okay. So that's a very easy process. Um, you're basically just going to, this is going to be in the ground, but you would just take it out of the ground, dig up, and then pull some apart. And they pretty much okay, so you will need to pull divide apart. Them. Divide them up, okay. and then you can spread them out, maybe give some to your neighbors, or just spread them around your yard. Should you do that every year? You need to Um, You don't them? have to do it every year, just depending. But okay. if, you, if you do let it go on for, you know, years and years, sometimes it, the ripe things like it gets so thick that they're not producing their flowers and they just look yeah. not, not so good. So you, you do want to do it every few years. And my daylily has the, the uh, leaves that have, have browned and they're falling over the edge yeah. of the planter. You just cut them and... Um, you can cut them, but pretty much once they turn brown, you can just pretty much just pull them right off. Oh, okay. And, All right. and awesome. let them go. So then we have some of our other perennials here. These are perennials here? These are perennials. Okay. Um, we're going to leave these perennials. That's what I do with mine. Now, you might really? want you might want to cut them back. It's not going to hurt them. Okay. Um, but something like this, the birds are going to feed off of. The songbirds right. love this coreopsis. Now, this is a cone flower. It is. It's a cone flower. And as you can see, these seeds here. Right. And I take those, well, I have black-eyed Susans, uh -huh. and I, when they get to this point, I take them and I collect all the seeds mm -hmm. and put them in a little cup, and then I plant them. Yes, you can start You to... can do that. You can leave the heads on here. Okay. The birds will feed off of them. Here's the black-eyed Susan. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Somewhere, yeah. oh, over here we have the sunflower, which puts out your sunflower seeds. Leave those for the birds, and then you're feeding the birds. You can also do that with your grasses. Oh, okay. Um, generally, you know, if you if the if it bothers you, you can cut the grasses back. It's not going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. I like to wait till the spring. Oh, okay. Because you cut the, oh, cut them back in the spring. Yeah. So they get all all brown. Brown, and you, you get that. Them? Yeah, you get that wintry okay. foliage. The birds feed off of them. Oh, they right. also use right. them for shelter, and they'll use some of the brown grass in the spring for the uh, oh, for their nests. Vet, for the nesting. Oh, yeah. About that. Now I wanted to ask you about this plant right here fascinating looking plant mm -hmm. with beautiful orange colors. What kind of plant is that? Chinese lantern. Oh, of course it is, because that's what they lantern. look like. Now, yep. the orange, is that the flower? That That's the flower, um, and they eventually will dry, and there's a little, you can't really see oh, it so in here. Oh, so it's like the seed pod. Yeah, there's a little a seed pod. pod in there. Well, they are beautiful. Um, they will self-seed every year, so they come back and they spread. And I just put them up there because they're just they're so pretty, pretty in fall. There you go. Yeah. All right. So more, more pretty fall things here. More pretty too. fall things. So as you're um, kind of getting rid of some of your annuals and things that you're not going to be using um, to feed the birds, and right, you can replace it with some of the. the um, ornamental peppers, the pansies. The pansies are going to do great. They'll pop up through the snow in the wintertime. Oh, I have a gorgeous picture last year where a pansy is just popping through the snow. How about that? Your Very ornamental hearty. cabbage and kales, when the frost lays on them, they're, just, they're really they're pretty. Rest, it, it's pretty. like ice on that them. That is pretty. Okay, so, we've got something. Is this food? This is holly toned. You want to put this around your trees. That way, um, next spring, they're already going to be feeding off of Oh. Um, so you want to use it for your evergreens, your azaleas, rhododendrons. You can even use it with strawberries, blueberries, anything oh, okay. acid-loving. Okay. So, all right. Um, awesome. I, I need to use some of this. And 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 yeah. young tree, young trees that you're trying to get established. Is yeah. Good for them young too? trees that you're trying to get okay. established, and it gives you a guide on the back. Very easy. You okay. just take a few spoonfuls, put it in the ground, and, and you're yeah. done. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So. And pretty much the last thing I guess you probably want to do, okay. you know, we, we've got our, our new fall vegetables in the garden. Right. Spinaches and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's also time to plant your garlic. If you like garlic, oh. you plant it in the fall. Oh, plant so it in the fall for harvesting in, in the spring? Harvesting in the spring. Okay. Well, actually kind of like midsummer. Um, okay. You'll wait till it starts to die back. It gets right. really big. And right here, I just went up to produce. I just grabbed some garlic, broke it apart. Don't tell. Allison. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never tell. And we're just going to plant it four inches deep, pointy side up. Okay. Um, probably six to eight inches apart and wait for it to come up next year. And it's going to look like just like an onion yeah. coming up. Uh -huh. And if you just wait and wait, you'll, you'll, have, you'll, garlic. you'll, you'll have garlic. You'll All see it right. in the bottom. Now, people are always confused when you want those Easter flowers, yes. the daffodils, hyacinths, tulips, right. you plant those in the fall. So oh. you need to come in. You can do that right up until the frost. So come on in, get your flowering bulbs so that next spring when everybody's tulips, daffodils, and hyacinths are up, 
yours will be up too. Okay, so you need to be proactive. Be with proactive that. Okay. with that. It, it's it's cheaper okay. to plant the bulbs than it is to go out in the spring to buy the whole. Well, that's plant. true. That's so true. So you're gonna save money that way too. Yeah, yeah. I I have not planted any bulbs, but I Ooh. have planted the the flowers that I buy here. Uh huh. And yeah. You plant them, and they're beautiful, the and then yep. they they die away, and then the next spring. Voila, there they there are. There they again. are again. It's there beautiful. They are again. I love it. Yeah. I have I, I tell everybody my Easter lilies mm -hmm. because I get them from church. We bring them home after right. Easter and I plant them. My Easter lilies bloom on the fourth of July. Yes, they will <laughs> bloom. The Easter lilies are actually forced for Easter. Yeah. And yeah. believe me, yeah, we do a lot of praying to make sure that they're popped at the right time for the churches. <laughs> okay. So, panic attack that time right. of the year. Right, right, yes. right. All right, so, so we've we've got uh, everything that we need to know about fall planting and getting ready for the winter and the mm -hmm. cooler temperatures. Feeding the birds. Feeding the birds, yep. all kinds of things. And of course, whenever you have any questions about any of this and you want to know, do I, don't I, just stop in, talk yep. to Kathy. She'll be stop happy to in, help you out. Stop in, give us a call, and we'll, we'll help you out yeah. for sure. Yeah, she'll help you out. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. So cooler temperatures mean tailgating right football fun lots of great food well we've got some additions to your tailgating menu i think coming up so let's check it out okay i call this the tailgating section and people are making fun of me because they say it's a little high end well you be the decision maker what we're doing here is a little bit of tailgating recipes i've got two recipes for you today and the first one is baked sweet potatoes sound pretty good huh you know when you go to the restaurant you always get the baked sweet potatoes instead of the regular fries well let's see how that's done what we got is two large sweet potatoes and of course you have to take the end off and you have to peel it i have my little handy dandy peeler and peels go everywhere Okay, so you get all of the peel off, and then you need to cut it into, uh, into fries. So the safest way to do that is, because see it's all rolly, and you cut your finger off? So what you do is, you take it and you give it a little bit of a flat spot. Like that. Now it's not all rolly. So then you take it, got to have a nice sharp knife that you can hold on to and you may remember when we had our student here from from St. George's Votech talking about knife skills she taught us this where you make the flat spot and then you cut keep rolling it around there we go. Now we've got maybe you like them big and chunk. Oops, see that was starting to roll on me. So turn it over on the flat spot. Makes it much easier. You can make them really big and fat or you can make them a little thinner. All depends upon whether you like big fat sweet potato fries or thinner ones. All right, so there we go. And we can even, we can make that one into a fry. Why not? All right, so what you do with your sweet potatoes, and we prepared these before, what you do with your sweet potatoes is after you get them all cut up, you need to put them in water and soak them in water for about an hour. And that gets all the extra starch out. And they tell me that makes them crispier if you get all that starch out. So what we're going to do is you can do it in a bowl or you can do it in a big gallon bag, but I really like these gallon bags. Put those in there. Put them all in the bag. And then, then you start with your spices and things. And the first thing you do is put a couple tablespoons of cornstarch in the bag with your, with your potatoes. Seal it up and then just 
shake it around because you're trying to get the cornstarch on as many sides of the fry as you possibly can. That looks pretty good. There we go. So we got the cornstarch on the fries. And then we have, then we have, let's see, what do we have? We have a tablespoon of vegetable oil or olive oil, depending upon. I like olive oil. So you've got that, that goes in. Seal it up and try to get that olive oil all over the sweet potato fries. Then you've got to go in with the spices. Open it back up. What we've got here is some pepper, quarter teaspoon of pepper. Got some paprika. Got some brown sugar, not much, just a little bit, brown sugar, garlic powder, get it all in there, all right, so there we got all of our, oh, I just got a whiff of the garlic powder, Whew. all right, so you seal it back up again, and shake it around, and you can see those spices and everything getting on the, on the french fries, some more than others. All right, then what you need, now I have some salt here, but you don't do the salt until after you've baked them. Again, makes them crispier if you don't put the salt on until the end. So let's move this over here. There we go, look at that. We've got spices and everything on there. Toss it. Now the oven needs to be at 425. Now the recipe that I got this from said that you use parchment paper and then you put the olive oil, spray olive oil on it. Well, I tried the parchment paper. My parchment paper like burned up, it, like all crispy and I'm not a fan of parchment paper. So, I think what you can do is just use the spray, the spray oil. This happens to be olive oil, right here. Spray can, they're so easy. And remember, don't take it and do this over the kitchen floor, because you'll end up on your backside when you take your first step, okay? So make sure that you spray it over a surface so that it's not going to go on the floor for safety's sake. All right, so we've got our fries. And we put them down on here. And you want to spread them out. That way they'll get they'll get crispier that way. If you need to have a second pan, you can do a second pan but you need to spread them out because you want your crispy fries. It looks like we've got too many fries for our pan, but maybe we'll try and fit them in there. There we go. We'll get them all fitted in. So you can see the different spices, the pepper, the paprika, and all that, okay? So you've got your, um, your oven heated up to 425. You've got your potatoes on there, and you put it in the oven. 425 for about 15 20 minutes and then you take it out turn them over all of them turn over put it back in for another 10 15 minutes and they'll be nice and crispy so you put them in the oven and when they come out they look like this crispy sweet potato fries with all kinds of wonderful spices and they're mmm See, they're crispy on the outside, but they're nice and soft on the inside. You can taste that garlic powder. Mmm, it's really good. Nice, soft inside. But they're baked. You could deep fry them, but bake them. Works out really, really good. Okay, so in our loose theme of tailgating, 
sweet potato fries would go great with a burger on the side, or maybe a hot dog, or hot sausage. Anyway, you get your sweet potato fries. Now next up on our menu, we're gonna do Italian sub bruschetta. That's really, really good. So we'll get ready for that. Okay, so next up on the menu, as I said, Italian sub bruschetta. Now, most everybody loves a good Italian sub and we make great ones here at Willie Farms. But sometimes people are like, well, a big sub is just too much for me, but I really like the flavor. So here's something for you. It's in smaller bites, but it's got all of the flavors. Italian sub bruschetta, and here's how it goes. You take ham, boiled ham, put that in there. That's a quarter pound. Capricola, put that in there too. Provolone cheese, and you try to make these as small little, you can see I've diced these up really, really small. And that's what you try to do, get it as small as possible. Provolone cheese there, and then we have some salami. This was really hard to cut up really small, but I did the best I could. Okay, so you put that in there. Then we have a cup of grape tomatoes, again, diced up really small. If you can believe it, I took a grape tomato, I sliced it, and I cut the slice in quarters, so that's how small. All right, so we've got a cup of tomatoes. There we go. Then we have to have our sauce. So we've got another bowl here. So we've got some olive oil right here. We'll put that in this bowl. Then we've got red wine vinegar. Got to have the vinegar. Add that in. We've got salt and pepper in here. Quarter teaspoon each, I think. And then we've got some oregano, some dried oregano. So put that in there. Then you got your whisk, and you whisk that together. Till it gets all nice and mixed up. And then you just pour it over the other ingredients. Get all that goodness in there. And then all that's left to do is to mix it up. So you're mixing it all together. You've got the ham, the capricola, the salami, the provolone cheese, the grape tomatoes, and that wonderful, wonderful sauce. It's all things that you'll get in an Italian sub. Now, truth be told, you could actually do this with whatever your favorite sub is. All the ingredients that you would put in your favorite sub, just put them all in here. And use whatever sauce would go with it. Put it all in there. Then next up, so you've got that all ready. Then you've got your, your baguette. And remember, again, we learned from our uh, culinary students from St. George's Votech what knife to use, and we're doing bread, and it's got a bit of a crusty outside on it, so you use a serrated edge. So we're gonna cut some slices, nice little slices like this. We'll cut maybe half a dozen. We'll have to cut more because, as you know, when there's food cooked around here at Willie Farms, People come from everywhere, and they love to eat it up. So, we've got, we've got some slices of our baguette. All right, so we'll put the slices on here. Got some nice slices. Now, most people sub, you may ask for it without lettuce, but most people sub have lettuce on it. And we didn't put the lettuce in because you know lettuce is very fragile. So what you do is you take a little bit of lettuce and you, and you put it on there, just a little bit, so you have enough lettuce on there to taste it. So we'll put a little bit of lettuce on each one of our little baguette slices. And then 
you take this and you put that on top. There we go. That's looking better. All right. Put that on there. So you've got all your little pieces of your sub right there on top of your baguette. And this that's why it's a bruschetta. Put it right there. And one more over here. And there we go. Yeah, some of it's going to fall off, but it's okay. You still get all those wonderful, wonderful flavors. So there you go. It's as simple as that, just getting all the ingredients together. Oh, we lost some more ingredients over here. Let's put them there. Put them right there. There we go. Catch those tomatoes. All right. So there is your Italian sub bruschetta. Very simple. Very simple. Now we have to have taste test. As always, we get to watch Donna eat on television and make a mess. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Hmm. Tastes just like an Italian sub. I think that was the purpose. Now, technically, you're supposed to mix all that up and let it marinate for a little bit so all of those flavors kind of come together and then, then you put it on your, on your baguette. But it tastes just as good like this. So there you go. Your two things that you can add to your menu at your latest tailgate party. Uh, maybe it's a little high-end. Who knows? When was the last time you had bruschetta at a tailgate? Well, if you make this, you can. The bruschetta and the baked sweet potato fries. I think it's going to taste pretty good. Hope you'll try it. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Thanks so much for watching. I'm here in our always busy produce area, and we hope that you'll stop by sometime soon. We're on Route 13 in Townsend, just south of Odessa, just north of Smyrna. Of course, you can keep up with us on social media. We're on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all over. And if you haven't signed up for our monthly email newsletter, you can do that on our website at willyfarms.com. That's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. We hope that we've helped a little bit with those gardening tips, and maybe you'll try out a couple of those recipes that we use for your next tailgating party. I'm Donna Cavender from Willie Farms.